students welcome for our lecture series on agrochemicals and pest control in this episode we are going to deal with the topic plant protection appliances equipment for crop protection refers to machinery and implements protecting crops in a scientific and effective way aiming at eliminating pests diseases and weeds and ensuring stable and high yield of crops in a narrow sense equipment items used for crop protection spray chemicals to protect crops against pests diseases and weeds it is an effective approach to maintain good harvest for grain forest and orchard chemicals are widely used for controlling disease insects and weeds in the crops they are able to save a crop from pest attack only when applied in time they need to be applied on plants and soil in the form of spray dust or mist so in this episode the following aspects are going to be seen they are principles and instructions for proper use of equipment dusters sprayers nozzle and uses of spraying and dusting equipment coming to the first one principles and instructions for proper use of equipment plant protection products can be applied in various ways using various technologies depending on the purpose and field of use it is known that the majority of plant protection products are applied by spraying using motorized bag sprayer equipment and water as the carrier medium only suitable and in good working order plant protection equipment should be used during applications of plant protection products smoking eating and drinking should not be permitted following principles must be followed when employing field sprayers spraying equipment serves the purpose of evenly depositing plant protection products on target areas in exact doses and with as little losses as possible possibly loss reducing technology should be used for example drip reducing nozzles the water rate application per hectare must be determined before starting operation the water application rate depends on the working speed of the operator the growth stage of the crop and on the weather when mixing the spray liquid the instructions on the product label with regard to product application rates miscibility and necessary precautions and measure of operator protection must be followed for measuring and filling chemicals into the sprayer tank or into the chemical introduction bowl only suitable calibrated measuring containers and appropriate methods reserved for that purpose must be used attention must be paid to the filling of sprayers tanks must not be overfilled above the indicated level and must not foam over it must be ensured that no spray liquid can return when the tank is filled with water from the water pipe empty pesticide containers must be thoroughly rinsed the wash water is added to the spray liquid empty pesticide containers must be perforated crushed and safely disposed of in an appropriate site to avoid having any spray liquid left over at the end of treatment the spray liquid consumption is to be estimated from the rate of application and the size of the area to be treated the number of tank fillings is calculated from the spray liquid consumption and the tank size the last filling must be metered correctly or even so as to fall a bit short of the needed amount the grower should consider 
the possibility of allocation of a small field patch that will remain untreated. Such field patch shall be used for the spraying of pesticide mix left over that will inevitably remain in the tank after every treatment. To achieve even horizontal distribution, the walking speed should be uniform and not more than 1 km per hour. In the case of tractor operated spraying, the driving speed should be 6 km per hour. With the higher speed distribution problems are growing more than proportionately. Spraying during strong wind spells, very hot temperatures or relative low humidity under 30% relative humidity will entail high losses through drift and volatilization and should therefore be avoided. Spraying equipment must be regularly calibrated and nozzles checked before every use. After finishing spraying, the spray residue in the tank is diluted by 1 is to 10 with clear water and sprayed over the remaining untreated area. In the case of tractor operated sprayers, the water should also be used to clean the tank from inside. Small residues which have been repeatedly diluted may be left in the tank and applied with a later spray if this is compatible with the product being used. The outside of the sprayer should be clean somewhere in the field that is treated. Moving on to the next, dusters. The desired effects of a pesticide can be obtained only if it is applied in an appropriate time and in a proper method. The important methods of applying pesticides are dusting and spraying. The appliances that are used for applying dust formulations of pesticides are called dusters. All dusters consist essentially of a hopper which usually contains an agitator, an adjustable orifice and delivery tubes. A rotatory fan or a billow provides the conveying air. Depending on the source of power, it can be classified as manually operated and power operated dusters. The manually operated dusters are package duster, plunger duster, bellow duster and rotary duster. First one is package duster. In some pesticide dust are packed in containers that serve as hand applicators and may be discarded after use. They are mostly provided with rubber, leather or plastic section which on getting squeezed provides a puff of air that emits the dust in a small cloud. The simplest type of package duster is worked by pressing it between the fingers. Second one is plunger duster. It consists of an air pump of the simplest plunger type, a dust chamber and a discharge assembly consisting of a straight tube or a small exit pipe whose discharge outlet can be increased or decreased by moving a lid provided at the end of the dust chamber. The air from the pump is directed through a tube into the dust and ejects it from a discharge orifice or tube. The amount of dust can be controlled by the speed of the operation of the pump. These are useful for spot application in restricted areas and for controlling ants, poultry pest and pest of farm animals. Third one is bellow duster. It has a pair of bellows made of leather, rubber or plastic. The bellows can be worked with a handle just like a blacksmith does. The dust is placed either in the bellows or in a separate container made of wood, metal or plastic 
attached to one end of the bellows. The air current that is created runs through the container and drives the dust out through an opening. Rotary duster. They are also called crank dusters and fan type dusters. They may be shoulder mounted, back or belly mounted. Basically, a rotary duster consists of a blower complete with gear box and a hopper with a capacity of about 4 to 5 kg of dust. The duster is operated by rotating a crank and the motion is transmitted through the gear to the blower. The air current produced by the blower draws the dust from the hopper and discharges out through the delivery tube which may have one or two nozzles. It is used for dusting field crops, vegetables and small trees and bushes in orchards. Now moving on to sprayers. The sprayer is one which atomizes the spray fluid which may be suspension, an emulsion or a solution into a small droplet and eject it with little force for distributing it properly. It also regulates the amount of pesticide to avoid excessive application that might prove wasteful or harmful. Sprayers mainly divided into three types. They are high volume sprayers, low volume sprayers and ultra low volume sprayers. Let us study them individually. First one, high volume sprayer. This type of sprayer further divided into four types. Manually operated hydraulic sprayers, manually operated pneumatic sprayers, power operated hydraulic sprayers and power operated pneumatic sprayers. First one is manually operated hydraulic sprayers. In that we have hand syringe. It consists of a cylinder and a plunger. Spray fluid has to be contained in a separate tank. The liquid is drawn on return stroke of the plunger and ejected during the compression stroke. After it ejected, the spray fluid has to be drawn in. It is useful for small scale spraying in kitchen gardens and pot plants. Bucket sprayer or stirrup pump. It may consist either of a double acting pump with two cylinders or a single acting pump with one cylinder. The other parts of the sprayer are the plunger assembly, foot value assembly, hose, lance and nozzle, a stirrup and an adjustable foot rest. The pump has to be put in a bucket of any container having the spray fluid. In the single acting pump, the spray discharge is discontinuous since the fluid is ejected only during the downward compression stroke. While in the double acting pump, the discharge is continuous as the fluid is discharged during both sudden and pressure strokes. This type of sprayers is useful for spraying small trees. Food sprayer or pedal pump. A pedal pump consists of a vertical pressure chamber mounted onto a stand and a plunger assembly with the plunger rod attached to a pedal in addition to a suction hose with a strainer, a delivery hose with an extension rod and spray nozzle. It has no built in tank. It works on the same principle as the rocker sprayer except that the pedal is worked up and down by foot in this case where the rocker in a rocker sprayer is operated forward and backward by hand. In both cases, continuous operation of pedal or rocker is required to maintain high pressure for uniform spraying. It is used for spraying agricultural crops as well as small fruit trees. About 1 to 1.5 hectare area 
can be sprayed in a day. Next is manually operated pneumatic sprayers. In the sprayer working with air compression system, the pressure is developed on the air contained in the spray tank. Hence, some air should be allowed to remain in the tank which therefore should not be filled with spray fluid completely. They do not have agitators and hence are not useful spraying materials which settle down quickly. Next is power operated hydraulic sprayer. A power operated hydraulic sprayer generally consists of a petrol engine and a framework. The following are some of the power operated hydraulic sprayers. Stretcher sprayer, wheelbarrow sprayer, traction sprayer and power takeoff sprayer. Next is power operated pneumatic sprayers. It consists of the following sprayers, portable sprayer and traction sprayer. The second category of sprayer is low volume sprayers. Since in these sprayers, the spray fluid is atomized with the help of an air stream at high velocity, they are called mist blowers or power sprayers. The tank in these is made up of a thick polyethylene and has a capacity of 10 liters. The fuel tank capacity is 1 to 1.5 liters. It is provided with 1.2 to 3 horsepower petrol engine. This can also used for dusting provided suitable accessories. The area covered by these sprayers is about 2 hectare in a day. Next is ultra low volume sprayers. The pesticide in ULV formulation is used undiluted at a quantity less than 6 liter per hectare and usually at 0.5 to 2 liters per hectare for field crops. The droplet size varies from 20 to 150 micron with ground spraying equipment for ultra low volume spray an area of 5 hectare can be covered in a day. Example, control droplet applicator. Next moving on to nozzle. A nozzle is a device designed to control the direction or characteristics of a fluid flow as it exits an enclosed chamber or pipe. A nozzle is often a pipe or tube of varying cross-sectional area and it can be used to direct or modify the flow of a fluid. Nozzles are frequently used to control the rate of flow, speed, direction, mass, shape and the pressure of the stream that emerges from them. In nozzle velocity of fluid increases on the expense of its pressure energy. Some of the nozzle types discussed here are adjustable nozzle, most suitable for spraying targets which are not within the reach of a man, gives a wide angle hollow cone to a straight solid stream that is it gives a jet to a cone type of spray pattern. Difficult to calibrate as they flow and droplet sizes vary widely with the nozzle angle. Next is double swirl spray nozzle used for spraying in two different directions simultaneously. Nozzles can be fitted with different types of tips like hollow cone, solid cone or flat fan suitable for high volume applications. The shape and size of nozzle tip orifice controls the spray angle, discharge rate and spray pattern. Spray angle influences the swath of a spray. Hollow core nozzles, disc and core type. These are used primarily where plant foliage penetration is essential for effective insect and disease control and where drift is not a major consideration. Flat fan nozzles. These are used largely 
for broadcast spraying where foliar penetration and coverage are not essential. The best operating pressure for flat fan nozzles is 15 to 30 psi which produce coarser droplets that are not susceptible to drift. Single swivel nozzles. Here the joint of the nozzle and extension rod is capable of swiveling without leakage. It can be locked for use at any angle between 0 to 180 degrees. Double swivel nozzles. This has two swivel nozzles instead of one capable of depending movement. Double fixed nozzles. Double fixed nozzles are fixed on the U-bend which is in turn coupled with the end of the straight extension rod. Next is spray boom. This design consists of several nozzles mounted on a rod ideally suited to row crops and can be operated with foot or rocker or power operated sprayers. Next is spray guns. Spray guns consist of cut off value extension rod and nozzle and can be trigger or hand operated. The spray pattern is adjustable from solid jet to halo cone and are most widely used for tall trees. Cut off values. These can be spring activated or operated by means of a simple knob or trap. A strainer can be built into the control valve handle and in the trigger type a pressure regulating device can also be incorporated. The last unit is uses of spraying and dusting equipment. The spraying and dusting equipment are used for the following purposes. For the insecticides application to control insect pests on crops and in stores, houses, kitchens, poultry, farms and barns. For the acaricides application to control phytophagous mites. For the fungicides and bactericides application to control the plant diseases. For the herbicides application to kill the weeds. And for the hormone sprays application to increase the fruit set or to prevent the premature dropping of fruits. And for the application of plant nutrients as foliar sprays. It can also be used for applying the powdery formulations of poisonous chemicals on the crops and for any other purposes. Finally, it's time to conclude our session. The development of standardization of crop protection equipment in the past decades has been revived. It is concluded from the trend analysis and prediction of future directions that standard systems are still not at its sound state and further preparation and revisions are indispensable for improvement. That environmental aspects and precise application of pesticides is the technological direction of future. Students, I wish you find few important information regarding the topic. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We will meet in the next episode. Till then, take care.